All right, this is the Genitus Chaos TV live stream episode number Uxi or number one in English. And today we have a fantastic guest on, Midi, bass player from Buddha After Midnight. Let's roll that intro. <laughs> Alright, so, how's everybody doing today? See everybody's joining the chats. Chats. We got Atomic Annie. Hopefully we will see some healthy farms while we wait here for Midi and I put my headphones in. So, oh, we got Camu in the chats. So let me know if you guys can hear me any better and uh, we'll wait for Midi to join us today. Looks like he's already here, so let's bring him in. Fantastic up ah there he is he's sideways all right yeah yeah like all right let's put this all on, on top of my like lousy <laughs> like it skills but like should i be like uh upper yeah rather than... yeah if you if you could there you go I'm, I'm doing the best i can here but like hey. I'm, I'm really suck at this so You're this doing... is all new to me and and we we put it on the tab of like the newbies now, right? No, no, you're doing fantastic, and I want to say thank you, Ketos Polyon. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy, busy man, and uh, and yeah, this is great. It's um, something we've we've been doing new. It's Instagram. It's a little different than YouTube and Facebook. I think. Um, oh, we got some healthy taco farms. It seems like people are putting tacos in the comments and we love that when people are doing stuff like that somebody so. could put me on, put some tacos on my table as well i would be glad with that so yeah me too i love tacos mm. um so so anyway where are you at in the world today are you in helsinki area or uh well close but no cigar um okay i'm actually i'm at my summer cottage today Ooh. in in my uh let, let's put it this way i'm in my uh garage now but yeah. since I don't have a car, so I decided to. It looks like I'm in a bar, right? So, yeah, I, I decided to turn <laughs> my garage into a bar since I don't have a car. So, but I'm here having my morning coffee and and so, and and so that, that's the, yeah. So <laughs> it, it looks like you know some might say that it like all right, media is having his five o'clock somewhere moment, but yeah, but, but I'm just in my garage because since it's. I was planning to do this outside, but it's raining cats and dogs outside. So, okay, yeah, I decided to go in my garage. Well, that's 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 fantastic. It was raining last night, actually, kept yeah. me up, and I was super excited to have you onto the stream. So I didn't get much sleep last night, but here we are. So uh, I don't miss your sleep <laughs> because of me, man. <laughs> uh, so um, anyway, I wanted to talk to you because obviously everybody wants to know about the new project, Buddha mm -hmm. After Mid Midnight, but before yeah. before we even get all to that into that stuff um what what have you been up to i guess in the past few months um just in general with the fact that the covid situation has hit and you know all of us musicians were not really able to play although finland has a couple shows here and there of course and um but the rest of the world is shut down and yeah and i know that you've thought well what, what have you been doing to pass the time or keep busy well, actually, um, like, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm in the source of the pure evil now. Since, since, since all the the COVID thing started, um, well, naturally, all the gigs have been canceled, right? Yeah. So, like, like you said earlier on that, uh, with the with the Buddhism thing, we should have had like the summer festivals and and stuff going through, but, but obviously, it all got postponed or canceled, and and moved to next year at least. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now I've been like mm, pretty much the thing that I've been doing like next to nothing is as I mean at this like I got this new summer code. This is like pretty much the family home that that my grandfather parents have been like taking care of, and now we got like now the property got into my hands. So like this is where I've been pretty much most of the time and, and taking care of things. And, and so, 
That's cool. The point That's is, I've, I've, I've been taking it easy, and and and, and you know, the being a, a, at this place that I like, I used to. This this like uh, my grandparents used to own this place, uh, and they lived all the summers in here. And and when I was a little kid, so I, I made a comeback to this place like Aww. this year, and and I've been like. You know, building a new terrace and 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 taking care of the properties, and since my grandparents are that old, that they cannot do it anymore. So I have my hands full pretty much all the summer, but it's been really, really easy going, laid back yeah. summer. But like, I, I don't mind that much. But but let's put it this way: that like, it would have been more than welcome to play some shows this year since. It's been a couple of years without any shows during summer, so yeah, I was kind of looking forward to <laughs> to doing the festivals this year. But like, I'm on the other hand, I'm not like into the the complaining choir, so to speak. So yeah, that's good because you know, there's nothing, there's nothing. It's out of everybody's hands, and and also, exactly. if if we do, I I feel the same way. Um, oh, we got Atomic Annie put another taco slash. Uh, pepper what, what's with in the, the chats. <laughs> is it the Sunday with the tacos or what? What what's the thing? I, don't know. Um, I think they've been very much into tacos lately, and and I, a lot of people that that watch these live streams, they they we we call it healthy farms, and they they put a whole bunch of like different animals or carrots or vegetables in the chats, and it's just it's fun. I guess it's fun for everybody. But what I wanted to say was that it's it's kind of like out of everybody's hands as far as shows goes, and nice. also I feel like. Um, I don't necessarily want to push playing um, if if it's going to cause people to get sick, you know, exactly. because I, I don't want to be selfish. Let's face it. You know, I mean, we all want to play, but do we want to risk people getting sick? Not really. Th th this is the point where I was like, these are the one of the conversations where you always get beaten up, right? Because mm. like people, especially in the social media, tend to like lose their nerves in a split second, right? Yeah. But but the thing is, like, I was kind of skeptical about, like, you know, like, when the restrictions are that loose that you can actually pull something off, is it actually necessary to, like, straight on go and do something? It, it It's like, I, I'm not sure yet w where I stand on this, but, like, I was kind of like, are you playing with fire here? Like, it, it brings me... The back to the Rolling Stones song, like "Don't play with me because you're playing fire." But uh, I, mm. I was kind of skeptical about like doing these festivals. But then again, <laughs> I understand the side of people have to work and they have to make a living out of something. So, yeah, that's true. Um, and I guess I sort of leave it in the hands of the officials or whoever's in charge of determining whether it's okay or not. Um, exactly. And so far, the festival shows that have been happening in Finland, they've reported that nobody has really been sick from any of them. So that's good. Exactly. But, and, mm, yeah. And as long as it goes on, on, on the side of that, so like, like go for it. But I was just kind of skeptical about it. Like, do we really have to like, you know, push it? But but hopefully, it's, and and what I've read as well is all gone fine. So go for it and and hopefully the rest of the year is going to follow among the lines that everything is going to go well and the restrictions can be more looser and looser every like every month since they're like but but we'll see I, i'm like like you said let's go by the officials that maybe they know better than we do yeah um and i think it's great that you are in the summer cottage and you're kind of in a way keeping your your mind occupied with doing like good physical work and fixing up the terrace and doing stuff like that, because actually, you know, you know that you're going to have some shows coming up. So that's, that's taken care of. And, and that's how I would feel. I'd be like, cool, I got shows and maybe next year we're going to do shows. So let me focus on just like, you know, doing stuff and not having to stress out about it. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. And, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be the, the, one of the participants in, in the, you know, the thing, the complaining choir that likes like, oh, my whole life's work <laughs> is like going down the drain and, and yeah. like, because it's just no point at this, at this hour, you know, it, it's just, there's nothing you can do. So like, 
stop bitching about it and just live with it in a yeah. moment. And 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 since when it comes to the boredom stuff, for example, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. But but the thing is, like, uh, since majority of the gigs that we would have done this year would have been abroad, right? Mm. And obviously, that's out of the question now. Yeah. So, so it's just like pretty much, you know, home and gig, and 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 that has never been like when you look back at like, boom, like touring history and stuff. It's it's really a small small part of the tours is like the the gigs in Finland. So. And and that's pretty much we're already battling to do those, so true. You can, you can figure how much gigs have we postponed it before, like not even like releasing the dates yet. And so there are a lot lot of tours that have been postponed before they were even released at this point. That's got to be, um, yeah. That if you think about it, what points of history are we ever have we been in where like these types of situations are happening because it's very strange mm. in a way that we have to worry about if we're going to book a tour and if it's going to get canceled or if the show that you have next week is that going to get canceled and it's yeah. it is a very it's like everybody's living on the edge and like you said there's lots of people that are that are quick to complain on social media especially but the best thing to do is well i don't think there is a best thing to do but i guess one of the things you can do is just kind of just chill and kind of let things play out the way they are and i actually yeah. give you a lot of credit um for you are doing something by doing what you're doing today by going on instagram live because that is something that we all can do you can go on live you can talk about what's going on with things and you're being proactive instead of just kind of complaining because it's too yeah. easy to complain we all can complain <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, that's no, no but that, that's just the, the usual you know say to mind that people tend to go in and I, i'm not willing to be one of those yeah that's that's fantastic so i have um, a couple questions from a, mm -hmm. a few different people that i i think we we need to get into first one is from a japanese girl right. by the by the name of tomio um, and she has a question for you. Um, she says, do you have any memories when you were in Japan? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, I'm, I'm always bad with years. It, it nev never comes back to me. I'm, <laughs> I'm always like one of these guys who like remembers what happened after another thing. But, but the first time I went to Japan, it was, it was the... It was kind of a bizarre moment when you, when you walk in there. It's like, how can these people know that we're coming already? And and we, we played like one show, I guess. Uh -huh. It was in Tokyo, and 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 I was surprised about like how warm the welcoming was in there. And 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 one thing that sticks really into my mind was like, where I think it was the hotel was like close to this Shibuya crossing. They, the, the world famous thing where you don't know where to walk because you can walk everywhere, right? <laughs> but um, but we we're going to the uh, to the like closest place to get something to eat, and then there comes this Japanese chick and talks like perfect Finnish. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> like 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 you know, and 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 like for everyone who doesn't know, like. Finnish must be one of the hardest languages in the world that you can pick up and and see delivered it perfectly. And I was like, "What?" And me and 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 John, like our guitar player, we were like, "What is this d chick doing?" And and then we were like really stunned about it. And and she was just like, "We're like, I would never guess the first time when I come to Japan, I will be speaking Finnish next to Shibuya Crossing." And I I was telling the telling her that like did you actually know that even after some finnish gigs that we do you know you're speak speaking better finnish than some of the locals after you know our shows in finland so like big ups to that but <laughs> uh but but no it, it was um it was great experience and and kind of now when you're 
kind of twisting the knife in my wound at, the, at this point. <laughs> so it really, like, that that would be one of the places I would like to go first when mm. when we're done with this virus, when someone figures out the way to beat this thing. But we'll see. Mm. Um, Kitos Palian Koska Mina Pahun Huvin Swami Amuta. I'm still learning, so I'm you know it's it's I thank you for speaking English. Of course, everybody um, from Finland is, is very uh, talented, and they do speak multiple languages, and one of them is English. And it's All right, I, I can uh, give you uh, like uh, this example of this goes in Ohio, I, I, if I recall correctly. <laughs> okay, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why you're laughing now, man? <laughs> because you're, of... you're from Philly or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm All Philly. right, so that's why you're laughing at the Ohio people. Sorry, <laughs> he's just Genitis. He's he's just like he's, he's your countryman. He's still laughing at you already. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but the thing is, we're playing at this festival in 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 Ohio, mm -hmm. and and hold your laughter now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember there was this stage hands, and they were like local guys. And I remember this one guy when we arrived at the the set. It was like afternoon-ish, like 1 p.m., 12 a.m., something around that, but really early in a way. And, and this guy uh, comes up, and like, all right, guys, let's unload the truck. And and, and he comes up with his uh, with his mates, and, and then we come out of the truck, and he's like, oh, where are you guys from? I said, like, yeah, from Finland. Ah, oh, you guys are from Europe. You must be smart. Like and then he, then then he comes to his like his working colleagues is like all right be careful with these people they're smart they're from Europe they speak like seven different languages and the only thing we talk here is hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I was laughing because Ohio is a bunch of country bumpkins and if you ever drive through Ohio, you'll probably fall asleep because there's really not much going on in Ohio. <laughs> so it, it's like a uh, Iowa as a state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at least, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of places, I guess, because you guys have done many shows in the States, um, and you probably know that there's lots of emptiness going on in, <laughs> in the States. So. There is there's great things in America and lots of things in, or lots of nothingness in between. Let's put yeah. it that way. Um, before we get into more questions, um, I, I want to go through some of some pictures that you have on, on Instagram, um, because, of course... <laughs> Yeah, you are the bass I should have player. deleted them like no, come on. before I got in this, all right? You, so the, these are from back in your previous band, uh, Santa mm -hmm. Cruz, I guess. And it uh, looks like you're probably on tour, possibly in the States on some of these pictures. But um, no, I, don't I know if took these all in my home. I just staged them <laughs> to look cool. <laughs> so I don't know if you can remember even if, if, you, if you've realized any of these shows that you were playing in. But this one here, I think, is... Super cool as I'm in your way, unfortunately, but it's kind of hard on Instagram to do these things. But right. it looks like you're quite the uh, the guy rocking out. Now this one here, I, I noticed. Well, this the was one like... previous, it, it was it wasn't actually that that nice of a show since this one is. Yeah. Since I, I played the show with the broken wrists, in, in all it. Really. Yeah. Okay. I, I broke my uh, left hand, uh, like let's say 15 hours prior to the show, and. It wasn't the easiest, but I'm glad it doesn't show. Okay, so so this picture where you're you're leaping off of a tall building and you're plummeting to your to your your death and you're playing with a broken wrist. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. Or how did you, or, or can you tell us about how you broke your wrist? <laughs> well, <laughs> since, since I already lied to the insurance company, so let's not go there that much. Okay. But, but it, it it was an un unfortunate mishap, which ended up being a broken wrist and but but um made it true let's put it yeah that way. well the saying goes the show must go on and um, exactly and the guy who guy who said that was a noble person and i respect him dearly so and it looks like now this picture i i, I read the post it was i guess one of your last days or when you were announcing that you were done with the band um so what? When was this? Was this 2017 or two, no 2018? Uh, yeah, the photo must, can be from anywhere in the past, but uh, but yeah, that that was back in 
yeah, 2018 when when we decided to call it quits and yeah, and, and then then after that, I guess you had some time to I guess re uh, I guess kind of refigure out what 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 your next move is going to be and um, then there were some more pictures of of you looking over the is this Hel Helsinki maybe no it's Tampere actually okay yeah okay yeah, but uh, but yeah. Uh, and I think it was pretty, um, in a way, needed and 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 a healthy break to to have some time off from kind of all the band stuff since it was pretty intense for the last. Well, I, I think since I joined the Santa Cruz when I was like fourteen or something, so it it, it was pretty much okay. On, wow. on from the on from there and. Mm, I think it it was it didn't hurt to have a couple of years off from everything and mm. figure out what would be the next thing. All right, of course, as life happens, you can never really um, plan what you're doing next. Since yeah, since you have to count in all the people around you, so I I, I didn't really actually count on to be like doing what I do now, but. But as life happens, then Alexei happens to come in and and ask me to join his band. So, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Um, yeah. And in a way, I I sort of can relate to you in in some of these posts that you have because um, when I was playing with CKY and Fuckface after my departure with them, I kind of yeah. was in in a I moved to Finland actually and really had nothing going on and was having time to reflect and figure out what I was going to do. And, and luckily um, now I'm playing with Andy. So that's, that's fantastic. But there's always that time when you're just really not sure what to do. And you actually, for me, it made me realize like who, who I, I learned who I really am for, for, for spending all that time without like any, any plans or nothing going on, just myself, my thoughts. And then you can kind of like build yourself up from there. And, but then here you are, boom. And now you're playing with these guys. Of course. I thought not... I had some time off and, and then this happened. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. As, and I apologize because I'm blocking one of the members. But of course, on Instagram, we can only do certain things. And I'm lucky to even have this. But I don't know. I, I, who... I can call, call Daniel and, and maybe he's not going to be offended by this. And if he will, okay. so we can yeah. do this again and, and you can flip it somehow. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I have a, there's a couple more questions I have from the guys over at chaos actually. And Shoot. So, yeah, the one is, um, it, how does it feel to be a rock guy in a metal band? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty good question. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. Yeah. I'd be laughing, laughing my ass off because of the, the same thing. And, and, and it, it's, it's kind of funny in a way since, since, you know, I, like like you said, I, like to be a rock guy because I I've never been that much of a metalhead in 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 that sense or like in this level that the other guys in the band are. Like yeah, I have my fair share of like I have my Pantera records and sh shit on back home, but like that doesn't kind of cut it at this in these circles, so to speak. And and it, it's it's been kind of funny and and. But the, maybe the, the thing has been that the, my bandmates have been like, dude, don't even get there. Like, be, be the one who doesn't know shit about, like, this section that we all, all others do. So, like, be the outsider by a choice in a way. And, and, and that, like... To maybe I don't know what it, what is their aim at in, in that point, but maybe keeping you fresh. But the, like, we want to have one guy in the band who is not like sunk into the deep end of the the black metal thing. Yeah. So so like I, I'm always gonna be the 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 kind of the accepted outsider of the band in a way, in a good way. Yeah. That's and, that's that's good. That's actually good. interesting layer. That's yeah, an but, interesting uh, layer to add. Yeah, and and like, and and to me, like, I, I always when when it comes to playing and stuff, I've always had that state of mind. Like, 
to go in, in into the places where you wouldn't maybe go and, and, and like push yourself as much as you can. And and at this point in this year I've pretty much been at the out of my comfort zone a lot since all this middle bass playing thing is pretty new to me and I really have to dig into that how do you how you pull it off. All right, of course Alex has been like great help with that when it comes to like playing and, and, and stuff and, and, and he's been there whenever needed but but it's still really pushing the boundaries of, of my own playing and I always try to bring myself in, in the like situations where I really have to push myself since that's the place where you actually can kind of um Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> That's the place where you can really develop yourself as a player, because the comfort zone is never gonna get you anywhere, and and that's the place where I want to be out of as much as I can. Hmm. Hmm. Um, was it? This is again from the Chaos Guys. What was it? A mm. fast decision when Alexi and Daniel asked you to join? No, it, it it wasn't that fast of a decision. It took me three and a half seconds to decide, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. Cool. <laughs> no, no, but like really it was a no-brainer. It was like, like the guys were like, you're interested? I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, of and, course. And cause, of course. Because like, it, I don't know, it's like I was in the point of, of uh, point in my life that like I had nothing that much going on. I didn't see that coming though, but but I was like, why not? Like, why don't leap into that? And and I've been like, believe it or not, even though I'm not the metalhead like like we spoke earlier, but but still it was. Um, I I was still been listening to Boodum since they released the Hey Crew Death Roll album in like early two thousands and and. And Buddha albums have been always in, in like, uh, we've been playing those albums in our tour buses since forever. And and it was really a total no-brainer for me to join the band when mm. asked, so. Yeah, and, and like I was saying, like, because you were in that, that point of, of just reflection and, and having time on your own, I think maybe it was also easy for you to say yes, because you, you knew what you wanted to do. and. And of course, playing with those guys, it, you you probably had it was it was it was the right decision to make. I'm sure. Mm. Um, what was the what's the band been doing during the summer now that there hasn't been shows? Like, have you guys been working on any new material, or is there anything that you can say or can't well, say? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah. So you're asking me to say the things that I can't say now. <laughs> well, I guess I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no. The thing was like. The, the the virus thing came kind of we had plans for the summer and then it all backfired yeah like like we know but um so it, it it came pretty fast that we have to figure out something else to do but then again um i'm not sure if necessarily in our case the 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 kind of let's say break before even starting was a bad thing since we got like more time to get together and let get to know each other since to be honest it was still a band that like pretty much Daniel and, and Alex were the only guys who knew each other that well so we, we had like a extended honeymoon before maybe now going to gigs and, and I think that was a good thing in a way, rather than like throwing the whole band into the deep end of like Tuska Festival and like, all right, guys, knock yourselves out. But mm, which you guys are going to be playing, I guess, next year. Next, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it was just like move for a year because because uh, of the time being. Mm. And but um um yeah uh, well we've been like practicing. Of course, first we had some catching up with just to get like you know in the feel of how is this band gonna sound like and stuff and 
And now, of course, since um, the state state of mind is, is is in a way that like things have to move forward. It, it, it's like the one thing that we've been like normally cautious is like we don't want to be labeled as as a cover band at the end. Since even even though uh, the thing is like the songs that. Uh, They are written by Alexi, and and they're gonna be performed in in the future as well, like the old Children of Bodom catalog and stuff. But the thing is also to keep the train rolling all the time, and and we're working on new material, release dates. I cannot, like honestly, I cannot say the, but as soon as we can get something done, we're trying to get something released as fast as we can. Um, since, since the thing, thing is, like like I said, the state of mind is, is that we, we want, we don't want to be labeled as a cover band, and the thing is that the train has to keep rolling all night long. Hmm. Hey, that's a... <laughs> I know that song, <laughs> okay. Oh, you know? So, yeah. It, um, it was a hit made by somebody, I don't know, some band even covered it sometimes but i, I uh, don't know I about think, those i think i've heard that but hey mm-hmm. let's cha- let's change to a um different different question actually this is this one is um is a good one it's from hero who she also she's a blogger and she writes for barks which oh. is the biggest online music publication in japan and, and burn magazine you probably yeah, know hero yeah, yes. yeah she has a great question and i'm i'm actually interested in the answer so she she says every time when she hears iggy pops the passenger from the radio, it reminds me of you. Um, you used to sing this song on stage. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you choose bass guitar to play instead of singing. Why? Why do you choose bass to play in bands? In, in the beginning. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, the story actually. All right, and this is not a made-up story to like just to make it sound cool. But, okay. Um, but it, it might sound like that. But. But, but if we go like way back in the beginning, it was the year has to be two thousand seven, maybe eight, but but somewhere along those lines, all right. And um, and there was this, you know, there was this uh, ancient thing. It it it, it like we're going pretty much in the way back of like old like cave drawings, but there was the thing called MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember MySpace. <laughs> oh, is this gonna the whole Instagram is gonna collapse when I said MySpace out loud? No, I don't know. <laughs> no. But but uh, yeah, uh, and and there was and, and I remember uh, Archie and Johnny. They, the Santa Cruz was already existing in in a way, and uh, they had like a few songs on MySpace, and and, and I was like, all right, this is the the raddest year because they were the they were the fastest shredders in town, so to speak. At that point, maybe this, uh, I don't know, but in the case, uh, and we have some mutual friends and, and I heard that they just like, uh, departed ways with their, uh, former drummer and a uh, bass player. And I was like, man, I like, I really got to get into, into a band that makes a difference. Right. So I'm like, what, what do I do? Like the drums is it, not my really cup of tea. And like, where do I put them if, if I even get get a set so like all right bass is way easier and quicker so um i borrowed a bass from the the old friend of mine and i called johnny to a mutual friend i was like can you give me like johnny's number and somehow like i need to call that guy so all right and i called him like hey dude like you need a bass player right in your band and he's like uh yeah (laughs) and i was like all right i'm gonna be the dude and he's like what the fuck, man? Like, you're not even a bass player. I'm like, yeah, not yet. But in a week, <laughs> I will. <laughs> and, and then he was like, all right, if, if you're so, de- like, determined, so uh, let's meet up uh, next Monday and rehearse. I think it was it was Night Train and some other Guns N' Roses song that it might have been so easy. Well, well this is just like my rec- Well, we are losing his stream because he's in the country, the country cottage, but that's okay because we are live and these things happen. So 
we will wait for uh, Mitty to come back if his stream catches again. But if not, um, I think that he was starting to tell us about why he got into playing bass, which is pretty interesting. And I wish I could. I will take him out. Yeah, he is gone. So let's see if I can invite him back in. Um, of course, we don't like to panic when these things happen because these are live streams and it's very anything can happen. That's the danger in rock and roll and the danger in live streaming. So let's see if we can bring Mitty back in. All right. Hey, Sorry perfect. about that, but like, no let's problem. put it all, all on the tab of, of the con countryside. Yes, of course. So, <laughs> so, so, so where, I, where, where yeah, were we? <laughs> we, we, we? I think we were somewhere, maybe I, 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 I dropped out of in, in the middle of the Guns N' Roses conversation yes. or something. Yes. So it, it might have been um, It's So Easy, the other song, but th that doesn't actually matter in the story. But in any case, so I practiced for a week for being placed and, and then I went to the rehearsals and and the guys were at that point desperate enough to like, all right, man, anything goes and, and, and they they hooked me up and and it took that trip took me ten years of my life afterwards. So maybe I did something right, but hmm. but but I, like I'm the the bass playing was never a decision, it was just a necessity of of just <laughs> of the circumstances, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I mean, bass, bass and drums are two good ones to choose from. I, I, I like them both, but I think bass, bass is probably better, right? Yeah, my bank account agrees. <laughs> yeah. um, so your favorite bands when you were a teenager, H H Hiro wants to know. Um, well, it was, um, I, I think it was, I still have to go back into into Guns N' Roses since uh, that was the band that actually made me decide, like, I want to quit soccer and and like go on this route of being an artist. So um, it, it it was, and it always has been. And I've said like out loud, like if I won't say Guns N' Roses is my biggest influence, then I would be lying and somebody would just slap me in the face. Uh, so that band has always been a big one, but it was never the first one in a way. Okay. Because um, my, my musical education, as always, uh, comes through my dad in a way. He's a guy who cannot like sing two notes in tune like in the same day so, <laughs> i don't know maybe that made me a bass player but but um but his music taste has been always ex exquisite in a way so so he was the guy who introduced me to like bowie and and black sabbath and um hanoi rocks and and all those like classic uh, rolling stones has been always like kind of in my mother's milk in a way and and all those like classic rock uh and and those came through my dad and and he gave me a good base basics of of like rock music in a way and and good starting point where i have been from there i've been discovering like all the other bands but but he is the one to blame in a way okay so like uh, and 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 I remember he was like, that was the thing. We had this apartment back in the days where my dad used to hold parties and stuff. And we had this like special room for just like books and, and an LP player, right? And because and my I was a little kid back in the day, right? So my dad wanted to get me out of the way. So his decision was to just block me in that room, put some headphones in and, and I remember him playing me the, the first Black Sabbath album, and that really was a big influence, and it still is to my uh, playing and my musical taste. And like he, he kind of set the tone that I've been like going from since since the day day one. Um, 
I, I have one more question, and I know we should start wrapping it up because um, you're quite the busy busy guy making all oh, the well, repairs. And <laughs> well, I'm pretty much done, done with my repairs here <laughs> at, at the cottage from this year. I, I, I told myself, like, all right, I'm wrapping it up, and everything that needs to be done in the summer cottage is going to be next year. It's like I'm, I'd had it. <laughs> so, okay, shoot. Well, here we go. So. This is a good one because we have our very own <laughs> Demi Dallas, the rock star that he is. He's actually All right, next this. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you also play, uh, it says, Hilda wants to know, you also play bass in a band called Camu. Mm -hmm. And as she remembers last year, when Camu had a gig at the semifinal in Helsinki, she saw Alexi and Daniel um, after the gig at the venue. And she says, on that day, there were gigs of two metal bands um, and at the Tabasti upstairs. And she thought that Alexi and Daniel came down to avoid the metal fans in Tabasti after the shows. But was this anything to do with you joining the band to come see you? It's a long question, uh, but it's a good question. It, well, it's not that long of a question. And, and <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, to put it nicely, um, I don't know if the metal bands upstairs had anything to do with with their presence in there. I'm not sure, but mm. but I guess not, since uh, the the reason of their visit was still to like check if I, okay if I take care of my uh, curly hair anymore. I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, no, but like seriously, I'm <laughs> <laughs> talking. Um, yeah, um, they came to see the show and 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 were like, come to see like what what's up with you and 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 how busy am I and 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 okay, wow, and like thanks, fan and and guys for like giving me a good introduction, but uh, but by that that was the day when when the guys were like really. Asking me if I would be interested in 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 joining the the whole bottom thing, and well, right. I had, I just had one answer to that, so right, and and um, so there's a somebody in the chats is saying that you are you're singing. Are are you going to be singing at all in in the 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 Buddham after midnight, or do you don't you don't? What do you think? You think you're going to be doing any backups or anything like um, that? Well. I, I was laughing my ass off because it was this one rehearsal of the day, and I was like, "All right, because there, <laughs> there has to be some backups, right?" And and I was like, I brought out this big sheet of paper, and I was like, "All right, the whole set list. Alex, walk me through all the background vocals. <laughs> you should see the fucking paper. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like there's just like lots of like different words with a so there's like." I was laughing my ass off because the thing it goes like, no, stop, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> if you hate me, are you dead yet? And that's pretty much the whole set list of like background vocals, like, and that's okay. one and a half hour gig. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be singing backing vocals, but, but like, I don't know if the singing or just roaring would be the, the perfect term for that, but. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it, let's say it's going to be different that, than what we used to do back in the former band when it comes to backing vocals. So it's like, I, I'm going to have it easy on this one. Right. Um, so other than, than Camu, um, are, are there any other projects that you're working on or do you have any, like, are you doing any like solo projects or are you are you doing any of your own songs or anything? Uh, no one will buy it. If I would do a solo thing, no one will buy it. It would be like a, like commercial train wreck so <laughs> no no solo things <laughs> but um, yeah um but yeah there's uh, let's put it this way there might be some project coming like uh, but maybe I, i'm gonna keep it in my pocket as long as it's ready and but mm. hopefully next year there's gonna be something new we'll see but okay. don't, don't want to promise anything, but um, 
but like you never put your eggs in one basket so or how do they say that thing i don't know you're from philly you know you should know these sayings or something all right yeah yeah don't put <laughs> your eggs in one basket it's true yeah. and, and it, especially in the music business it, it's very good to kind of spread yourself around a little bit just in case things happen or or yeah things and not change e and not even that it, it, it's it's not like uh the plan b kind of thing at all i don't i don't see it that way i i, I see it rather that the more active you are the better it is and and the wider your range is when it comes to music it, it's it's always healthy to to like broaden your like own sides of doing music and 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 not just like i don't see it's away from anything if you're committing yourself to do other projects in in the same time when you're working with some band i think it's it's all a bonus as long as you can just keep up with your schedule like i've, I've always been a huge fan of of uh Corey taylor in a way since um I, i don't know how he manages it but and especially now when he also has his own solo band now it's like didn't you have enough bands already but maybe not but because how <laughs> but i've been always the fan of how he can cope with being part of like in my opinion at, at least in the biggest metal band of our time slipknot and And at the same time, doing the Stone Sour thing, and now on top of that, even doing his solo thing and be featuring in other other like albums with like I don't know how he does it. Maybe he has a some assistant who is really good with schedules or something. But uh, but I've always been a fan of that, and I've never seen or like like. I don't see it that way that, that let's say that Corey Taylor doing the Stone Sour thing has never been anything away from Slipknot. Or I, I don't know the, the backgrounds of it, but so I would like to think. So in a way, I don't see that having multiple bands is away from anything. I see it rather as a bonus than, than a... Than a... Well, how would I say? But, but yeah. the, as, uh, the things don't, don't get in their way. Like as long as you can, the schedules fit. So it's, it's I, I see it as a good thing, and 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 it's always like good advertisement for the other projects, the, the everything that you do in the side. Hmm. So, Very true. And, and I I, I want to keep active as much as possible since you know I don't. I, I say I always think that the moving forward is the only way to go, and and never looking back, and and exploring new grounds musically is the only way to roll in a way. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's really that's really good. Um, well, I think we should start wrapping up the stream today. But before we do, is there anything uh -huh. that you want to say? Um, actually, do, when well, you can't really say when, but like. Maybe in the next couple months, we might be expecting some more stuff coming out from you guys, possibly as far as music or ideas mm. of when music is going to be released, possibly. Or, well, we we're uh, kind of living in a, you know strange times these days, but and, and everything goes like day by day in a way. Uh, yeah, the pla the plans we have already they go as long as like two years from now. Of okay. course, since you you have to plan ahead. But the thing yeah. is, what makes the difference is like the plans can be altered in a way uh, how the world turns now, right? So if if we're lucky, there might be something happening even like before the end of the year. But it all comes down to you know the state of the of the virus and, and, and stuff and yeah no releases this year yet but but we'll see about w when actually there's, there's one thing i've been like really curious about is like people have been postponing their releases because of the virus i'm like why i don't, I don't kind of get it since like people have more time to listen to music than ever 
So why True. postpone their releases? But any, anyhow, uh, hopefully next year is going to be full of releases from like yours sincerely. And um, and hopefully still there is going to be uh, a chance to play a show or two before the end of the 2020. We'll see. Mm. But but of course it's going to be all Finland and yeah naturally and if if even that and because thing is that we're getting monthly updates here in Finland how much people can can fit in the one room with all the safety precautions and and stuff like that so it's we're really living on the edge we can like book shows and then just keep our fingers crossed that they will happen and You can never yeah. really tell before the day actually comes. I, I've been already like, we're having this. Uh, actually, the ne- the only show might be if if everything goes bad. That um, the only show I might be doing this year is going to be next Friday. We're doing this uh, social distortion cover thing with friends of mine. We're, we've been having this uh, cover band for the last what seven years or something. So. Uh, mm. We're gonna have this show. Maybe gonna have this show before they decide to cancel it. Gonna have it uh, on the rocks. But even you know the club dates, they're being like the there has to be seats and tables for everybody. And yeah, and you can sell one third of tickets. And yeah, that's um. I know we have a gig at the Hard Rock Cafe, and they're limiting yeah. it to two hundred people. So that's the deal. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to do it like where they they fewer people, but they raise the ticket prices a little bit to compensate for the the lack of people. Yeah. We I don't know yet. I, I but I will say I really appreciate you coming on, and I would love to have you come back on in, in the next couple months so we can get some new updates on what you guys are doing. Um, it was fantastic chatting with you today, and I'm I'm sure everybody at Chaos TV is super stoked to have you come on today, and we really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, man, this is really, really good conversation. And um, we're looking forward to hearing some some music from you guys soon, and um, for you to come back on. And I really appreciate it again for taking the time. To I'm come trying on today. to do my best for the for the next couple of months to have you something new to talk about when we come back at like December ish on this matter, right? Yeah, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Hey, just, so just th- for you. Oh, right. <laughs> keep those poly on, keep those poly on. So let's end the stream here. And I like to say at the end of every stream, I will see you on the next stream. Rock and roll. Say bye-bye. Ta-ta.